is Friday, October 23, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. More than 90 Barbados-based LIA employees were formally terminated from the cash-starved airline on Thursday. The workers, including pilots, engineers, flight attendants, and ground staff, received their letters from court-approved administrator Cleveland Seaforth, who is overseeing the restructuring of the collapsed airline. The Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court in Antigua issued an order authorizing him to terminate the contracts of 564 employees who had been laid off and to retain 103 workers required for the continued operations of LIAT. C4 assured employees that the company will honor severance entitlements, vacation pay, retroactive pay, and any outstanding salaries, but he warned them not to expect payment anytime soon. Less than a month after being elected, young politician Kimar Stewart has been suspended as General Secretary of the Democratic Labour Party and as President of its youth arm, pending the outcome of a marijuana possession charge against him. Well placed sources have revealed that Damian Griffith, who was defeated by Stewart in the party's internal election last month, is now acting General Secretary and Vice President of the Young Dems, Shaquani Hunt, will act in his stead. When contacted, Stewart declined to comment on the matter. The quantity of marijuana allegedly in Stewart's possession dates back to 2018. It was not specified on the police charge sheet, and he's neither accused of having intent to supply or trafficking the illegal drug. Leader of the People's Party for Democracy and Development, Reverend Joseph Adderley, has brushed aside concerns raised by Solutions Barbados' leader, Granville Phillips II, that the PDP has chosen green as the party's color, despite the fact that it was already the color of Solutions Barbados. Phillips contends it has led to some confusion for residents of St. George North during campaigning. It's not an issue for us, it's not an issue for me, not an issue for PDP. We don't indulge in puerile issues. A number of local manufacturers are in line to receive critical training and other forms of technical assistance from the Trust Loan Fund as officials seek to get more firms ready for export. Business Development Manager of the Fund, Kurt Dotton, says, coming out of a series of training opportunities for entrepreneurs, the organization has formed key partnerships to ensure entrepreneurs have the critical assistance they need. Initially, this relationship with BNSA would only be for manufacturers because they recognize that persons have products. They actually go on the computer and do labels. But in terms of promoting products and trying to get outside of the local economy, because really and truly the contraction, which is here now with the COVID and other economic factors, we are in a position now where as we are trying to provide a special technical assistance to this person, we join the BNSI, we would assist with the packaging and labeling because it's a graduation exercise. Once we get persons to export readiness, we would then transfer you to the BIDC, who would then, BIDC and the Caribbean export, who would then do the further promotion because at the Trust Law Fund, we don't have the expertise for that. So in the whole ecosystem, in terms of working with small business development, we are partnering with similar agencies to provide additional business development services for our clients. The 10 million trust loan fund provides loans of up to $5,000 to qualifying applicants with an opportunity for them to borrow twice that amount upon successful repayment of the first loan. Administration and Operations Manager at the Trust Fund, Michael Bowen, says entrepreneurs have been reaping the benefits of the program. We have trained about 1,500 rounded uh, entrepreneurs and we've seen amazing feedback coming back to us that some of us would have, some of them would have rather the training than the funding itself because they begin to understand that business is really making a living, not just making a profit, making a living. And going on from there, they're able to pass on that wealth that they will have generated from the businesses to future generations. So that's the whole idea, a developmental program that keeps going on and on and revolving. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional news, a number of Jamaican students attending the University of the West Indies Mona campus are breathing a sigh of relief following a donation of $2.5 million to the institution by Prime Minister Andrew Holness. We get the details in this report from Television Jamaica. Over 100 students faced the possibility of being deregistered, having owed money on their tuition for the semester at the University of the West Indies Mona. This has been a recurring challenge for many students seeking higher education. But the problem has been made worse with the coronavirus. The pandemic has seen a number of persons losing jobs or having their salaries reduced as businesses tried to combat the effects of the virus. In addition to tuition fees, students are also faced with another expense, an internet bill to enable them to access lectures online. It's why the Positive Jamaica Foundation and the Jamaica Labour Party Education Fund on Wednesday provided the university with $2.5 million to aid some students in paying their tuition. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says serious dialogue is now needed on how tertiary education will be financed going forward. I have put in place a tertiary, um, not that tertiary, but a, a, an education transformation commission that will um, take a look preliminary look at this and the tertiary situation. We, we may have to go into deep analysis, figure out you know, for the next 50 years, how are we going to ensure that our growing population gets access to tertiary education, which is now becoming the standard on the international scene, President Donald Trump and Democratic challenger Joe Biden met for the second and last time on a debate stage on Thursday night. The COVID-19 pandemic, climate change and race were among the topics the two candidates tackled. Euro News we, we has been analyzing their performance. We have heard quite a lot coming out of this debate that it was a more substantive discussion. I think uh, one of the winners, if you will, uh, may be uh, Kirsten Wal uh, uh, Welker, who, the, who moderated this uh, uh, debate that... Uh, perhaps we haven't seen in this round, of keeping the candidates on, on topic, uh, responding to the questions, pressing when they were varying from, from the questions. Uh, and and as, as many uh, other observers have noted, a, a much more subdued Donald Trump. And I think the lesson there that he learned from that first debate and the, and the, and the polls following the debate showed that uh, his debate performance hurt him. So uh, he took a new tack tonight. Uh, now, coming out of this debate, again, I focus a more, a, a deeper focus on the discussions. Uh, if, if one claims that it was a draw, that neither candidate either made a major gaffe or blunder or really did anything to turn the dynamics of this race around, then that really is advantage Joe Biden. Uh, because as we've seen now for some time in terms of the national polls, but also polls in, in several of the battleground states where Joe Biden has, has a lead, sometimes a slight lead, but uh, nationally, uh, 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 a, 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 a pretty decent lead. Uh, it was Donald Trump incumbent upon the the, uh, the president tonight to to do something that would turn the the dynamics of this race around, uh, to shake it up, and that didn't happen in this debate. That's news. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.